Hey guys, it's Tom. So, around uh, 1 a.m. I uh, woke up to um, to hear the news that B.B. King uh, had passed away um, at age 89. Um, unfortunately, I kind of knew that he was not in really good health. Um, I, of course, follow uh, Mr. King on Facebook, and uh, there was statements that he had been rushed to hospitals, uh, that he was confined to his bed. And then, at the beginning of this month, I went to see The Who uh, when they were playing at the American Airlines Center, and um, Pete Townsend did uh, make a statement that the band was sort of, um, it had been a rough weekend for them because they had found out that B.B. King was uh, not in good health, uh, and, and that Ben E. King, who had, was a member of the Drifters and wrote such classics as Stand By Me and Spanish Harlem, he had just passed away. And of course, uh, this morning we found out that B.B. King uh, had actually uh, passed away. Um, I, before I really get into B.B. Um, King and all his music and all that, uh, I kind of want to uh, state that this is not so much, um, I'm not going to make this a sad video, uh, because when I, of course I, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and things like that, and I was uh, so happy to see there was a lot of love for him, and of course uh, there would be a lot of love for him. He's considered uh, the king of the blues, you know, he's a legend in the music field and probably due to American culture, um, but there was a lot of love. Uh, Eric Clapton posted a very touching video on his Facebook page. Uh, Carlos Santana wrote a very nice uh, thing for BB. Even uh, President Obama had something to say about him. There was a lot of love that I that I felt, and I kind of wanted to just touch on that. Um, of course, I am sad to hear that he has passed. Um, but, you know, I've, I've kind of had a strange thing with celebrities uh, passing away, and it kind of all goes back to Robin Williams when he passed away. Um, last year. Uh, I didn't know how to feel about his passing, believe it or not, um, because I didn't know the guy personally. I only knew him from characters that he portrayed on screen, um, and it's not like I ever got a chance to meet him, shake his hand and say congratulations uh, and thank you for all the great work you've given me. But of course, you know, after he had passed, I went back to watch his movies and I just watched them with a smile on my face and just thinking, man, we were just, we were lucky to have him, you know? And uh, it's a shame, but uh, more than more than all that, I'm happy that he uh, was around and we got to experience his talents. Um, and of course, it's sad that I'm not going to really see him in anything else. But musicians, uh, for musicians, it's kind of different um, because musicians go on tour, and that gives me a chance to actually go to the show. And I like to think that when I go to the show, I'm actually sort of thanking them for all they've given me. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I went to go see The Who in May. Um, I had not seen The Who, um, and uh, two, two of the members have passed, Keith Moon and John Entwistle, so all that really was was Roger and Pete, and of course the band that they play with now. And um, I, you know what, I don't mean, it, it's kind of funny because in, in you know, 20, 30 years when they have shuffled off this earth, I will be glad that I have seen them because I would like to think that they saw my appreciation for them because I showed up at the show. Uh, of course, you know, I'm sure that they, they could care less about me. Um, but um, I like to think that if I go to the show, that's, and that's me saying, I like your music so well that I'm willing to pay however much it is to go to the show and I can, you know, thank you for all the great music you give me. And that's happened with them, Eric Clapton, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney, three times. Uh, so, um, but I never got to, I never got to see B.B. King. Alive. Uh, um, I was I'm I was never and I'm I'm still not a huge fan. I like him very much, and when I say fan, meaning um, well, I've been holding on to this for uh, the whole duration of the video. It's BB King Live at the Regal, which is considered to be his masterpiece album, um, and you know, and I have this, and I have a compilation of his uh, 20th, 20th Century Masters, the best of BB King. Um, I highly recommend you get both of these. Um, I don't have the best of BB King physical copy with me, but the fact that you know BB uh, was still touring uh, and still playing um, at the uh, as he got older um, is nothing short of incredible. Um, I would have, I really would have liked to have seen him because he just seems like a guy who just would have put on a great show. You know, yes, he, he does the whole show sitting down um, because he's had some health problems over the years, but I tell you, man, that guitar sound that he has. Uh, not had, he has, um, is just incredible. You know, you just play like one note and you know it's BB. Um, it's really fantastic. Uh, kind of a side thing, a couple of years ago, um, I was with my church. 
Um, they used to, well, they still do it. They, but but I we used to, I I used to go on these things called mission trips. I want, I don't know if other churches have them. Um, but essentially, what happened was you and your uh, youth uh, group, whether it was junior high or high school, it was mostly for high schoolers. They would travel to other um, cities uh, and and do work. Um, I'm not going to get into much into that. But what I'm getting at is, on the way back one time, I think we were we were in Memphis or some some place like that. I want to say Memphis, but I I probably think I'm wrong. But there was a huge hotel. I don't remember the name of it. Um, and in this hotel was the biggest gift shop you've ever seen. And you walked in there and there were guitars all along the wall. And I went in there with my friend Daniel. And it was just incredible because underneath each one had a little description of which one what was. You know, this was, uh, you know, this, I was to say Sammy Hagar. That would have gotten me some letters. This was Eddie Van Halen's uh, guitar from Van Halen. Uh, you guys know the one with the, with the red and black. Uh, there were V-shaped guitars. There was, um, you know, fat guitars that kind of like Chuck Berry used to use. Um, if you ever Google any of his uh, pictures back when he was playing in the 50s. And then my friend Dan and I get to this huge... It, it was... it was the, This guitar was the size of a whale. I mean, it was just incredible. And underneath it said B.B. King Lucille. Now, if you guys don't know, Lucille was the name of B.B. King's guitar... Uh, well, he probably had multiple guitars, but that's his most famous one. And I'm sure, you know, that wasn't the one. Of course, I'm sure um, whoever the guitar company was, I want to say it was Gibson, um, but they, it was it was a model of that, you know, made it in the style that B.B. King had. But just to see the model was nothing short of incredible because just to think, you know, that's not far off from the guitar that that guy plays. Um, my, my, my friend Dan and I just stood there with our, you know, jaws unhinged. It was really, it was a really special moment. And you know what, BB King's has been at very special moments in my life. I remember, uh, even when I was 14, when I was in eighth grade, because no eighth grade listens, to, uh, to the blues, but I did, I was a little bit different. Um, I remember getting it, uh, getting the, the best of BB King and, uh, the songs, The Thrill Is Gone, uh, was incredible. There are a couple other songs that are um, I don't think are really well known, but I know them because they're on that you know, best of. There was a song called Paying the Cost to Be the Boss, um, Don't Answer the Door, Guess Who, I Like to Live the Love, Oh, Let the Good Times Roll. That's become one of my favorite songs ever by any artist. And, you know, he, B.B. King and Brad Paisley, <clears throat> they did a great job uh, on it. Uh, years, <clears throat> excuse me, I got some gunk in my throat. Years later, um, when I used to um, actually make um, like videos uh, for family fun instead of just for YouTube, um, one time I documented uh, my family's trip to New Orleans and then to Alabama. And because New Orleans, and because BB King is sort of associated with New Orleans, um, it was. Uh, such incredible to hear that music and travel to New Orleans at the same time. And we ended up calling the film Let the Good Times Roll Film. The the roll film, I think, was my brother's idea. But it was a very cool thing um, to put that together and use B.B. King's music um, at, in a place like New Orleans. It really just kind of went hand in hand. Um, so, uh, I never got to see him live. I, 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 re I really liked it. I know my parents had seen him. Um, you know, uh, this might have the, the effect, uh, like, like I tend to do with most celebrities that maybe I'll go out and buy more BB King albums. Um, uh, but this one is incredible. The 20th Century Masters is incredible. Um, guys, BB King was one of the best. I know he's old. He was 89. Uh, he, he would have, he would have turned 90 this year. Um, but he is nothing short of incredible. Um, and if you guys want the best, um, way to hear how B.B. King has touched so many musicians over the years. Um, go out and pick up an album by a blues musician named Keb Mo. That's K-E-B apostrophe M-O. Keb Mo is a contemporary blues musician. I heard his album uh, the same time as I heard B.B. King, and they re and you could hear the connections from the, the records that B.B. King was making in, like, say, 64 when this album came out. And this guy, Kevin Mo, made his album, I want to say in 2004. The album's called Keep It Simple. And 
you know, the sound is much is much clearer on the two thousand on uh, two thousand four album, Kev Moe's album. But you can jump from BB King to Kev Moe, uh, but there's not that huge of a jump. He's you know he's all over that that album, and there's a song on uh, Kev Moe's album, keep, keep it simple, called Riley B King, which of course is BB uh, King's real name. The BB stands for uh, Bill Street Blues. I think that's how you pronounce it, Bill Street Blues Boy. That's what B.B. King is known as. But the song is called Riley B. King by Keb Mo. Um, it perfectly sums up what B.B. King means to him, to the world, to other musicians. Um, and that's an incredible album, too. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a great shame. But, you know, I'm so happy we got to, you know, have him here with us and bless us with uh, his incredible work, um, his singing, his guitar playing. Um, and it's just, it's just incredible. So anyway, guys, I don't have much else to say. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you got to see BB, uh, King live, I'll leave a comment below. I'd really be interested to hear, uh, your thoughts on what you thought of him as a live performer and what you think of BB King in general. Um, and it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a great loss, but we've had a great talent with, with him and, I don't think we, we I don't think we would trade it for anything else. So anyway, guys, I'm running out of breath, running out of things to say. So thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.